Hello, welcome to Prime Pro Video. Today we're going to be talking about the availability search and how to use the search facility in Prime Pro to find candidates. First of all, you need to come to the availability search tab here. And then you will notice a series of filters below. So the main ones are the dates from and to. So these dates are mandatory because we've got a red asterisk, so we have to put something in there. What I'm going to do is look for some drivers that are going to be from the 8th to the 14th of July. I'm going to select my category here, driving, and then my skill. You don't have to select skill because immediately, as you'll notice in the list below, it's showing me all my uh, people that are categorized as drivers per se. But I want to narrow it down to uh, class one drivers here. So now I'm looking at specifically class one drivers. Now what you'll notice in some of these filters, it's already checked um, that they're active, their general compliance is compliant. So in other words, things like rights to work, etc that you've set up. Uh, their qualifications are also compliant. So the qualifications relating to the skill selected class one, uh, in which my class one drivers have to have uh, a digi card, driver CPC and c and &E license. All of three items need to be in date. So these are the drivers that we have that are fully compliant and potentially available now. If you look at the availability percentage column, you'll notice that some of them are less than 100. So by clicking into one of these, we'll be able to see where they're actually working. So let's have a look at Stan. We can see from the calendar that Stan is actually working this week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, six till four. So clearly Stan is booked out for most of the week. So by clicking on the percentage here, it will obviously take you through to their availability calendar. You'll also notice that you can open the candidate record by clicking the reference number here. So if I wanted to view Leo's record, it's opened a secondary tab. So it's kept the availability search window open on the first tab and it's opened Leo in a second, which is really convenient because I can look at Leo's record, I can look at his skills, qualifications, and as you can see, the three items of his qualifications uh, expire in 2020. So far, he's good to go. You'll also notice that you've got two telephone numbers, obviously the secondary telephone number and their mobile number, which is really useful for you to be able to phone people up straight away. You can see their ratings. So this is the consultant rating that you've rated them by. And of course the client rating. So if you've added any client ratings, this is their average client rating. So as you can see, Sue and Marcus are actually showing as excellent potential candidates, hence they're working probably. The contacted button here will simply automatically update the contacted date and time. This is quite useful just to say that you phone this person and you wish to just literally update their record, the fact that you spoke to them. It is also an indication as to when you last spoke to these people. So for example, if it's been a while since I've last spoken to Paige, as you can see, 4th of October, 2018. So what else do we have here? You have the ability to export the, uh, the list grid below to Excel, which is really useful and I'll show you that later in terms of the contents of what's in that export. But what I want to do now is show you some of these additional features up here at the top, these filters. So we can say, have 
uh, any of these candidates worked at a particular client before. For example, Clipper Logistics. Search. So it's already refined the list just to show the candidates that have worked at Clipper Logistics. And all these candidates have worked there, well, potentially at any time. So if we filter it down to the last 12 months, let's take a look now. It's reduced it to three. Let's say six months. Still three, three months, nothing. So basically, these candidates have worked for Clipper Logistics in the last three months. A very useful feature to be able to work out whether or not you want to find people that have worked at a particular client before and maybe use them first in any potential bookings you might be handling with them. You also have the option to search the archive, any qualifications, whether they're expired or both, and general compliances. So let's go through some of these right now. So let's just check how anybody that has the relevant qualification or skill, um, but they might have expired. So these are the candidates with their uh, expired qualifications. And if we take a look at Joe here and go to his qualifications, you can see the qualification that's expired, in particular his CNE license. So obviously we need to do something about that before we can actually use him in any work. So we would need to contact him and then simply update the date here to identify that he's now current to use. If we look at any of these other candidates, for example, Liam at the top, yes, he does have the skill of an HGV driver. He's been tagged as that. But when we go take a look at his qualifications, he has no such qualifications. So what's happened is someone's tagged him as a skill for a class one driver, but they haven't bothered to update any of the qualifications. So obviously at this point, this candidate would never be used as a class one driver until his qualifications were updated, added, and clearly up to date. So again, this is another way in which we can identify any people that have expired and chase them up. We can also um, look at people that have expired general compliance. So general compliance obviously is your things like rights to work. These are overarching compliance requirements that you've set up in the system. And without those, they won't be able to work in any role or any job. So let's just take a look at any people that are class one drivers with expired compliance, as well as expired qualifications. We have one person, Hugh. So when we look at Hugh's record, you'll notice straight away at the top the red triangle, which means that the candidate doesn't meet the general compliance. Lo and behold, it expired in 2018. Yes, Hugh does have the skill of a class one driver, but indeed, when we go into the qualifications, again, they all expired in 2018. So why not look at the archive as well? So the archive is where you've specifically archive candidates in the system. To archive a candidate in the system, one of your consultants would have to click the yellow folder here to archive them. This takes them out of the active status and means you can't place them in any more work until you put them back into the active status option. So as you can see here, David Lane is archived in the candidate list. I'm looking at all candidate statuses. If I specify active, then obviously that filters just on the active people in my list. So let's just close that a second and pretend that we didn't see David's record there. So if we wish to look at people that are archived with any qualifications 
for general compliance has expired. But our class one drivers, to anybody in the past that has that skill, but for some reason they've been archived off, and you know maybe we're short of drivers at the moment. So what we need to do is search our archives. So by expanding the criteria of including both expired and compliant qualifications and compliant and expired compliances, it gives us a better opportunity to see who we've got. And of course, David is the one that shows up. So what you're seeing is the flexibility to be able to very quickly and easily analyze the data, to search on the data for people that are compliant, non-compliant, or both, active or archived, or both, in a way for you to be able to find people, candidates, your most precious resource, especially if you're short of them. Now what I want to do is show you some of the other features. So let's just switch these on as they were. We've got a contact option here. So all the people in the list can be checkboxed or you can individually checkbox people. And then you can click the contact button here. We'll open up this window. So here we can send an SMS or an email as an ad hoc send. And these are the people that are added to this list of recipients. And then you just simply type in the message here, click send. And instantly the SMS text messages have gone. So again, a really useful way to communicate to any people that you've not necessarily engaged with in any particular time or you just want to send them a quick message. You're available for work. You know, it's that time of year again when we're short of staff and we need to maximise the possibility of finding candidates to fill all our bookings. Alternatively, or in addition to, you can use email by simply typing in the subject and the body and again click send and it will go to their respective email addresses. So a really quick and easy way to fire off some communications to the list of people below. You can also use it to chase up things that have expired like qualifications or general compliance to get them to obviously communicate with you and supply you with the necessary things to keep them compliant for any jobs that you might want to put them forward to. So other options here, we've, we've all, all obviously discussed the uh, possibility of specifying the category searches, the skill searches. Uh, you can use obviously a period range here, which you have to, by the way. Uh, but also you can specify the postcode. So this is using more of an area or geographical search. So if I look for all my drivers that are in the Northampton NN postcode, here they are. And if we randomly pick one, say Wayne, you can see he clearly is in an NN postcode. If I choose a different postcode just to test, so KT for Kingston, we don't have anybody. Finally, I want to show you um, the export to Excel. But before I do that, one last thing to mention is show candidates with client requests. Client requests, if you would have looked at the candidate record video, would explain that you've actually marked a candidate where a client has requested perhaps they don't want that candidate back. So any candidates with requests means that in a way it's a bad mark against their record. So it might be mean that you don't necessarily want to communicate with those candidates if they do have such bad marks against their records for any potential inquiries you make to finding candidates. Indeed, it's your call. So finally, we come on to the export to Excel option. So we click that and it creates a download which we can open in Excel. To open the Excel file that we've just downloaded, you have to click yes to this, to trust it, because effectively you're downloading a file from the internet, so naturally uh, there's going to be some security questions to make sure that you're not down downloading anything harmful. And we're going to enable editing it. So as you can see from this list, 
we've got some very useful information. This has got their name, their telephone number, their mobile number. So this could be very useful for those consultants or recruiters that work out of hours where they need to sort of download a uh, candidate availability list and maybe contact candidates out of hours in case you've got urgent bookings that you need to fill. So as you scroll to the right, you'll notice that obviously you've got the different days of the week specified in your search range, which was the 8th to the 21st of July. And you can see here that some of these are unavailable on certain days, hence with the no's displayed there. So the beauty of this is that this particular Excel file could be saved obviously locally on your machine, it could be printed off, it could be saved to your mobile device and a very useful piece of information for you to be able to download at any time you like. So this concludes my demonstration and training session for the availability search today. I hope this is useful to you and uh, do remember to like our video and look out for any more Prime Pro videos. Thank you for watching.